This is breaking news. Right now at 6 o'clock, a weather alert for Futurecast 8 shows potentially severe weather all across the state. A wind advisory and heavy rain for most of the state and a winter storm to the north. Storm Track 8 meteorologist Tara Hastings joining us now with everything we need to know. Busy night. Well, overall tonight looking good, but it's tomorrow. Yeah. The rain will begin late tonight after midnight. Boy, it's going to be a soggy Friday and pretty mm. much everything is on the table for the day on Friday. Wind thunderstorms, heavy rain, mm. and even snow. Oh, wow. Wow. But it all depends upon where you are in the state. We'll take a look here and show you that we are going to expect just about everything. As far as rainfall, we'll break it down for you. One to two inches of rain possible. Gusty winds, winds upward of 40, 50 miles per hour, and that's non-thunderstorm wind gusts. And then snow, moderate to heavy, wet, heavy accumulating snow mainly, I think, in northern sections of Indiana. Severe storm risk. We do have a, a slight risk that some of the thunderstorms may reach severe criteria from southern sections of Johnson County, uh, Columbus, Bloomington, Washington, Evansville, and to parts of Richmond. That's a level two out of a level five. An isolated tornado, not completely out of the question, and damaging winds as well, along with very heavy rainfall. Right now, pretty quiet conditions. We'll begin to see the clouds thicken up during the overnight hours. There's our storm system well to the south of us. It is going to move northward and bring with it all of that weather. Right now, we're seeing dry conditions. A live look here in Speedway, we're at 51. 49 in Indy, big temperature contrast. And that's what we're also going to see for the day tomorrow. We'll talk much more about what we can expect for your Friday and into the weekend in my full forecast. Thank you. Now to IT Made and the outrage over toxic soil from the Ohio train derailment coming to an Indiana landfill. Governor Holcomb today ordered third party testing of the hazardous materials for dangerous levels of dioxins. Some in the community are few furious over the decision to ship the material to Rochdale and filled a town hall meeting last night to voice their outrage over the lack of communication. Today, IT Made's Cody Fisher heard their biggest concerns. Protesters are here in Putnam County as trucks that are potentially carrying this contaminated soil are making their way into the landfill. These protesters are letting the company know they don't want this material in their backyard. IT mates saw several trucks going into the landfill today, but it's unclear if they had contaminated soil in them. People have a profit! The protesters told us they're out here because of their long-term concerns about the materials being in the landfill. I just think about my children, you know, our children, and the children of this community and, and how much this could affect them in the future. The protesters told IT Mate they're also concerned about the violations the landfill has that are listed on the Environmental Protection Agency's website, showing the site has been in violation for 12 consecutive quarters. A representative from Heritage Environmental Services addressed those concerns at a town hall meeting on Wednesday night, saying the violations are a labeling issue. And that labeling issue was already addressed with Indiana Department of Environmental Management and, and the reason why that shows is 12 consecutive quarters is until, until they close that out from a paperwork perspective, in their office, they leave that issue as open in that, on that website. We asked the Indiana Department of Environmental Management for the full report to violations for the landfill. They told IT Mate they're working to get that information to us. In the meantime, we talked to IUPUI professor Gabriel Filippelli, who's an environmental geochemist with experience in analyzing reports like the one showing the violations. I would consider these low-level violations in that there's no um, money or punitive uh, issues involved. And it's likely something that's relatively minor in this case, whether it's a labeling issue or whether it's a safety protocol, it's not all the way in place issue. It um, doesn't seem to be a major release of a toxin of any kind. His only concern about the landfill? Most of these landfill sites in these facilities do tend to experience some environmental leakages of some kind or another eventually. So although my concern wouldn't be for today, it might be for 10 years or 20 years down the road. And it's our chance to finally be heard about The protesters told IT Mate their community is being targeted because it's a poorer area. It wouldn't be happening in, if we were in an affluent community. Heritage Environmental Services says it'll take about 100 trucks to transport this soil here to the landfill, but they don't know exactly how long it will take to get that soil from Ohio here to Indiana. Reporting in Putnam County, Cody Fisher, Wish TV, IT Mate.
Rail workers cleaning up the site of the train derailment in East Palestine say they're getting sick. They blame the rail company Norfolk Southern. Rail union leaders say their members are forced to work under dangerous conditions. I've been out there a dozen times. Nobody's wearing protective uh, equipment. I've asked three or four times. It's really alarming. Claims come the same day as a National Transportation Safety Board reports uh, blame a faulty train venting from the, for the derailment. Uh, it says that high temperatures and faulty pressure relief valves allowed pressure to build, causing the derailment. Friday will mark one month since that disaster.